All right. So in order to show you guys how to deal with things like reflections and interactions with the ground, I'm going to bring in this new source, this mountain lake. So I'm just going to drag and drop it in at the very top. Then I'm going to stretch it, put it in, and then I only need a portion of it. So just kind of remind you what we've learned from compositing. What do I actually need? I just need the water. So I'm going to do a rough cut above it. And then I'm going to duplicate Command J. And then I don't need to rasterize anything. I can just delete the smart object it comes from. Then I'm going to push that down underneath into my scene. So pretty, all those colors. And then move it down. I have auto select turned off. So I can just easily select the layer that I'm currently on. I'm going to put that lake somewhere so it feels like the tips of the tail are just going to be hitting the water. All right. And let's move it over a bit. And you can see there's already a reflection in the lake, but it's not the reflection of the right scene, right? So what do I need to do? I need to bring down a guide. I can also use actually a pretty handy tool because there's a slight angle to this lake bed. So instead of trying to freehand it with the lasso, I can use what's called the polygonal lasso. And the polygonal lasso, you click and then it will do straight lines from wherever you click. So it's a nice way to really control kind of more straight and angular selections. Okay, then I'm going to select, and then I'm actually going to select and mask just to feather that selection a little bit so it's not super, super sharp. So I'm going to feather it by about two pixels. And then I'm going to delete that away so you can see what this does. There it is. I haven't adjusted the colors or anything yet. But now this is kind of the trick to it. Everything that's behind it, which is here, I'm now going to, why not just use the polygonal lasso? Let's see. Actually, let's do it this way. I'm going to use my guides. I'm going to stick it right to where I cut it out. Or even better yet, I'm going to select the empty space that I just deleted. Right? Then I'm going to go to my setting layer behind it. I'm going to duplicate that. Push it on top. And then I'm going to flip it. Command D. Flip it vertically. And then move it down. Then that would be if it's like the most reflective mirror surface ever. Then I might compress it just a little bit to fit it into the frame. And now I'm going to, just like a texture overlay, play with its opacity to show that reflection in the water. Now that's a very, very still lake, right? So if I wanted to mess with that a little bit, I'm now going to use the smudge tool. This takes a lot of processing, but it's fun. I'm going to make it pretty big, pretty soft, and I'm going to make it strength, I always say less than 20. That might be a little little weak for what I'm doing, but I'm just going to drag this through it a little bit. And you'll see it's like pushing the water. And it's processing, processing. And as long as it doesn't shut down my Photoshop, it's good. So let's do it again out here. 
just drag and you can see it's kind of pushing the water. And as it does that, it softens the edges a little bit and it makes it more believable. You can see it doing it there as a reflection. Now it can be too much, that's a little too much. So you can just soften it a little bit. And then what's the other thing we need? We need to dodge and burn it, just like we did for our creature. So if I burn the midtones, I'm going to bur burn the edge of it a little bit, just on the lake itself, because the reflection is going to be strongest where it it's closest to its source, just like a cast shadow. And I can do that a little bit on the, the lake element underneath too. Well, that's what's getting in the way. It's the the burned shadow. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and use smudge on that a little bit. Okay, so I've troubled the water just a little bit, and now I want to burn around its base edges. If you remember from our reference, even the very, very calm lake is darker at the edges of the frame here in terms of the reflection. It's darker here than it is up here. So I'm going to burn. Once it's finished, finished smudging. Come on. I'm going to burn these edges a little bit. Now, the moon is a really strong, nice light. And then if I want these to be interacting with the water, I might actually composite in some of that, that water movement, or I can do it with dodging and burning on these kind of non-destructive layers. So different options, different ways of playing with compositing. Just waiting for Photoshop to catch back up with me. Let's see, I'll save it as something else. Call it Surreal Desert Lake. Once it lets me. So it's a good lesson. Smudging takes a lot of processing. All right. Jeez. Okay, now that I've saved it, let me close Photoshop to clear the memory. Just saved it. <laughs> and let me close some of these other things I don't need open. And then let's open that. Because when the tools get really slow, it's, it's good to start it fresh. Okay, so now I'm just going to burn the edges, just the, the highlights and the midtones, just at the base of the lake here. I'm doing on this non-destructive layer. And you always want to do kind of a reality check 
this mountain isn't being reflected and that's just because of the the source material didn't show them as dark so I want to darken up these mountains and I can even just take that opacity up so that's a little bit stronger all right so I'm going to use my eraser at 100 percent opacity use my tablet and just clean up this reflections edge so you see as an overlap there I just want to knock it down to the, the shoreline There we go. So compositing is all about kind of edge control. And now to make it interact with the water, you can see the the kind of swirl of the galaxies in there I can be pretty strong now with my non-destructive overlay layer and I'm gonna use dodge and burn in a way that it's still compositing because it's still just affecting the pixels underneath but in a way that's a little bit stronger so I'm gonna to go to about a 50 percent exposure and I'm gonna start with highlights So you got to do mid-tones because I'm in a shadow. And I'm going to burn it a little bit, and then I'm going to dodge it. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And I want to get some of these ripples. You're going to trouble the water where this is hitting it. Right. You can see that kind of disturbance. Now, if I do a reflection of my creature, not much of my creature is going to show, but this is what I can do. Hold down Command, select all my creature layers. Command J will duplicate them all. And then I can merge all of those duplicates into one. Then I can flip that vertically, just like I did with the background. And then I can bring it down so it's reflecting. And all that really reflects or the, the tip of the tail there. And then I just take its opacity down and I smudge it a little bit. And I can see where it's touching right there on the surface of the water. And then if I really want to make kind of an impression, let's see, make a new layer, fill it, with middle gray, change it to overlay mode. This will be just for these ripples. And now I'm going to dodge the midtones, really strong, pretty small, and leave these little ripples. I can soften that a little bit more. You know, catching the moonlight, and then they, they ripple out from there. 